Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Barbecue Nation 1Q FY23 Post Results Analyst Conference Call hosted by Ambit Capital. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Vidisha Sheth from Ambit Capital. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 1QFI23 earnings call of Barbecue Nation Hospitality Limited. From the management we have with us, Mr. Kayum Ganani, Managing Director, Mr. Rahul Agarwal, CEO and Full-Time Director, and Mr. Anurag Mittal, Chief Financial Officer. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kayam Zanani. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I take the pleasure in welcoming you to quarter one FY23 conference call of Barbie Nation. Since the onset of COVID a couple of years back, this quarter was a fully normalized quarter. We are happy to report yet another remarkable performance at our company with over consolidated quarterly revenues crossing 300 crores for the first time in the history of Barbecue Nation. We reported highest ever revenue of 315 crores during this quarter, which is around 3x of previous year quarter one and 25.4% higher than the immediate preceding quarter. Despite a challenging inflationary environment, we managed to uh, we managed our gross margins well and achieved gross margins of about 66.8% during the quarter. This was driven by targeted efficiency projects, better cost management, calibrated price increase, and change in business mix towards dine-in. We also reported healthy EBITDA margins of 23.3%. We have clearly defined pillars of our growth, namely Barbecue Nation India, Delivery Segment, Toscano, and Barbecue Nation International. We are extremely focused on growing each of these four verticals to build one of the largest food service companies owing its restaurant brands. In our core segments of Barbecue Nation India Dining Business, we added nine new restaurants, taking the total India network to 176 numbers of restaurants. Our India business has grown well over last year and previous quarter, led by higher covers and higher realization per cover. We have a strong pipeline of under construction and under evaluation sites planned to cross 200 outlets of barbecue nation in India in this financial year. During this quarter, our dine-in to delivery mix has changed in favor of dine-in. We have witnessed a decline of around 6% in our delivery business as against the previous quarter. While our a la carte orders have continued to grow, our box orders have declined. Our delivery ratings have continued to improve with our focus on delivery business. We believe the business will stabilize at the current levels. Toscano business has grown by around 54% versus the previous quarter led by both dining growth and two new outlets added during the quarter. Toscana now has 13 restaurants across three cities, and we plan to add around five more restaurants this year. Toscano delivered healthy store margins of 23% plus in this quarter. International business is the highest margin business in our portfolio, with store margins of over 25% plus. We have demonstrated sustained SSSG and profit growth over the last three years, and now are looking to add two to two, three restaurants this year. We are extremely focused in building and growing each of these four verticals and build one of the India's largest brands, owning food services company. We have always built this business with focus on our guests and employees. I'm proud to share that this year we were ranked seventh in the Great Place to Work survey. And we're also ranked among the top 10 retail companies to work for in India. With this, now I hand over to Rahul to take you through the quarterly performance of the business. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kiran. And good evening, everyone. We are happy to deliver the record quarterly sales and profits at Barbecue Nation. Our operating revenues in quarter one FY23 were 315 crores compared to 102 crores in uh, a COVID impacted quarter of quarter one FY22. On a sequential quarter basis, we grew 25.4% driven by growth in volume and average elevation. We reported strong uh, SSLG uh, year on year of 182%. SSLG as compared to the previous quarter was 19.8%. Our dining segment has grown around 6x versus the previous year and 32% versus previous quarter. Our dining uh, to delivery mix change in favor of dining. The absolute delivery business uh, has declined by around 6% on a sequential quarter basis. The Sano business has uh, subsequently has sequentially grown uh, by around 54% during the quarter and delivered 23% plus store margins. Uh, similarly, our international business has sequentially grown by around 24% and delivered 25% plus uh, store margins. Uh, during the quarter, we reported gross margin of 66.8%. Uh, this questionary pressures on the input costs. Our calibrated price hikes and improved operating efficiencies helped us to manage gross margins better. Our reported EBITDA was 73.4 crore in quarter 1 FY23, delivering a healthy margin of 23.3%. Our adjusted EBITDA without the impact of NDS and excluding non-cash ESOP related expenditures were 46 crore, uh, delivering 14.6% margin. Out of the total portfolio of 195 restaurants as on uh, 30th of June, around 80% restaurants are matured, uh, which is more than two years old. Uh, this matured portfolio uh, delivered annualized sales of around 7 crores per outlet, with store margins of 21.5%. Out of our new restaurant portfolio of 38 outlets, 24 restaurants were less than six months old and are growing well. This portfolio delivered store margins of 6.2%. Uh, both the numbers are uh, without index. Uh, as this portfolio matures, we believe this business will further increase. Our sustained, uh, we sustain our momentum in uh, network expansion and added 11 new restaurants during the quarter, taking the total network to 195 as of June 22. Uh, we have a robust under construction pipeline and a strong pipeline of working progress sites, and we're progressing well towards our target of 40 restaurants in FY23. Uh, strengthening and accelerating our core dining business, uh, growth in our delivery verticals, Unlocking the growth potential of Toscano and calibrated international expansion continues to be the key four vectors of our growth agenda. Uh, with this, we can now open the, uh, the session for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have a first question from the line of Harit Kapoor from Invest Tech Capital Services. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, so my first question is on the uh, uh, on the margin side. It's around at fourteen and a half percent. I think adjusting for other income around fourteen uh, percent. You know, given that Q one is a is a is, is not a very peak quarter for you, you you, you peak out in Q three. You have higher operating leverage during that time. Do you expect that full year margins could actually be a bit better than what you kind of achieved in uh, in, in quarter one? Is that a is that the right way to look at it?
side. So, uh, it, uh, you know, it is expected that you would have seen some kind of a fall in the, on the delivery side. I just wanted to get your sense, is, is this the kind of run rate that you're now kind of expecting uh, for uh, the rest of the year? Or, uh, uh, you know, are there some uh, efforts in place to kind of, you know, increase assortment of the portfolio or, or, or you know, uh, a greater extension kitchen, et cetera, which can drive this number up a little bit as we go through the year? Yeah, so uh, on delivery front, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's uh, declined by 6% sequentially, but uh, there are two sub-components to that. Uh, one is uh, obviously our box product, which was uh, which was a keeper during uh, during COVID years, and the second portion was our a la carte uh, business, which is uh, individual orders or a couple of items going in order, all this, right? So the a la carte uh, uh, segment has actually grown uh, versus last quarter also uh, in uh, in this quarter, uh, but our box product business has has come down a bit. Uh, our box product obviously is a group eating uh, uh, eating product, but we've also seen that the increase that we saw in our dining business on a larger base was significantly higher than the uh, than the drop that we uh, saw on the box segment of delivery. Right. So overall, uh, the mix has slightly changed in favor of dining. Uh, my expectation is that uh, this should stabilize uh, at the current levels. Uh, uh, what we did in quarter one in, in July, we have done pretty much same level numbers as we did in quarter one. Uh, uh, but there are a couple of interventions that we're making. Uh, we are uh, we are actually uh, working on a on a dedicated uh, uh, you know uh, delivery only online biryani brand. Uh, so uh, we are uh, we've been working on this for quite some time now, and uh, I think we are at a stage wherein uh, this month we should pilot it in few locations, and depending on the success, we will take it up uh, you know pan India. So uh, you know as we always maintain that uh, at, as Bobby Nation, uh, given that we own our kitchens, we own our brand. We have capability to add multiple stuff, and uh, biryani being one of the largest category, uh, you know, uh, we are experimenting something on on that front. So, uh, I think while currently number looks stabilized, but once something like that kicks in in our business, uh, this number on delivery can uh, can further go higher than this. Great, that's it for me. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Samir Gupta with India Info Line. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, this is uh, Percy here, Percy Pansiki. Uh, my first question is uh, this uh, plan of opening up uh, restaurants internationally. I think earlier uh, when this was discussed, uh, you had mentioned that uh, you would prefer to go through the franchisee route here. You would not want to put any capex in uh, international. So does that plan still remain? Uh, can you give some idea as to what is the mode of expansion into international? Yes, so uh, uh, we are exploring both, uh, Percy. Uh, and uh, uh, we also we said that uh, while we will do franchising in the national markets, uh, we'll also look at a uh, couple of sites maximum uh, from our own uh, balance sheet. So as of now, we have uh, we have a pipeline of around three sites. Uh, uh, we are we don't know whether that will uh, that will completely uh, you know fructify, but uh, we may add uh, around two to three from our own balance sheet. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are also exploring uh, uh, you know franchising uh, in few of the geographies, but uh, the lead time zone these are are really very high, right? Uh, and and that's the plan on on international. But uh, one thing is, we will not go overboard uh, in terms of opening up, say, seven eight outlets uh, right now. So this year, at max, we'll do two or three outlets uh, from our own balance sheet. And uh, uh, what would be the capex per store here? So uh, this would be around uh, uh, around four crores or so. Uh, but uh, the payback periods and all are pretty much similar. If you look at uh, uh, the international business uh, it's already delivering around uh, around 10 crores of uh, uh, of average revenue and 30 percent plus uh, uh, you know uh, store margins uh, so uh, the payback period wise it's around two years which is similar to you know or slightly better than what we all see in india so we know that uh, uh, we don't want to uh, completely uh, you know add more and more given that the payback is slightly better as of now but I think a couple of years, a couple of sites in, in that market uh, uh, is just a problem. Okay. And these two, three slites you have located, uh, uh, sort of uh, shortlisted, they are all in Middle East or uh, somewhere? Right. right now it's Middle East only. So it's not, uh, so, uh, not opening up a new market. It's only where we already have the, the teams, the product, the businesses set. Okay. 
second question is uh, did i hear you right that you mentioned that uh, basically the uh, number of bills per restaurant are 10% uh, below the optimum level something like that you mentioned yes okay and so just wanted to understand covers. because the number of people right yeah yeah okay so just wanted to understand uh, because this has been a completely normal uh, sort of quarter and uh, in fact to some extent there has been revenge spending on these categories that is uh, uh, people have sort of possibly gone out more than what they normally would so why is it that right. we are still 10% below uh, uh, the optimum level and what would be required to bring it up to 10% i mean another 10% See, now the last segment, which is still not uh, back 100%, is is corporates. Most of the IT corporates also are not fully back. Uh, so our uh, our weekday businesses, weekday lunch businesses, are still slightly lower than uh, what we used to do on a pre-COVID uh, uh, basis. So I, I think that's the that's the big gap. Apart from that, on the uh, uh, on the weekend side or on the on the friends and family segment side, uh, I think we are pretty much sorted there. understood uh, on margins uh, you are about 13 and 14% margins this quarter uh, versus uh, our sort of target of 15 there is obviously uh, input cost inflation and you have taken some price hike so how uh, uh, fast do you think you can come back to that 15% level with q2 be back to that uh, since the price increases have gone through uh, during the quarter and they have not affected the full quarter of q1 but they will affect the full quarter of q2 so would that would i be right in assuming that or it would take more time so uh, i think we should look at it for the full financial year this is uh, uh, quarter 2 uh, may not be there because of exceedingly weak quarter uh, uh, but uh, based on quarter 3 quarter 4 uh, numbers that we come in i think blended basis full year we should be at 15% margin okay so for fy23 we still have hope of uh, being 15% for the full year okay and my last question on is on this new brand of biryani that you are uh, you are speaking with that put your call on hold please hello yeah sorry hello? Uh, can you repeat your question please yeah yeah i can hear uh, you uh, uh, this biryani brand uh, which you are uh, sort of planning to launch for delivery only uh, can you give some thought process there see because uh, uh, barbecue nation itself is very well known for biryani so why have a second brand here if at all we want to do something uh, uh, with a different brand in delivery we should be doing it in a type of cuisine where we are not already present so uh, uh, i tend to slightly disagree here so uh, look barbecue nation brand is more of a dining brand uh, with all you can eat uh, you know value offering service driven experience driven uh and uh, if you look at our delivery business also we largely do it under the under the ubq brand uh, while we also have a barbecue nation listed but uh, ubq brand uh, actually stands for uh, for ala carte offering on in indian uh, uh, cuisine segment uh, and uh, while we serve biryani in across uh, both these platforms these are not dedicated biryani platform and uh, uh, you know we all know that uh, biryani is one of the largest categories uh, you know in the country in, in, in delivery segment and uh, we have been obviously Uh, preparing biryani and serving biryani for, for for many years in across all our platforms so it is pretty much a natural extension in a adjacent category uh, for us uh, but uh, when you want to compete in a market uh, wherein there are dedicated players uh, i think that required a separate uh, uh, you know open more outlets in particular metros and tier 1 and increase your revenue 
automatically you will get the profit and automatically everything will come because the staffs are excellent and it shows the, your hr policy is good and very at, good atmosphere and it is excellent that is why i as an individual i can say the, but i feel to increase more profit or uh, revenue increase the outlets because very few outlets are there in cities is better you can rapidly expand that will be ideal to increase the revenue everything i hope you will do that thank you thank you sir uh, thanks for your comment uh, about our team uh, thank you and uh, regarding increasing the uh, the number of outlets uh, we are geared to to do that so i'm planning to add uh, up to 300 in the next couple of years sir thank you sir okay. wish you all the best it is excellent i thank appreciate you. this one i love it thank you sir we have next question from the line of vicky punjabi with uti mutual fund please go ahead yeah hi rahul thanks for taking my question uh just one uh, just just on back to that uh, the, to 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 the biryani outlet a uh, biryani brand launch i wanted to understand uh, you know if these get served from the same kitchen how much of spare capacity do we really have in terms of scaling up and uh, uh i mean uh, just to understand i mean uh, it seems like there will be no incremental cost at least for the launch of this brand it will be largely from i mean my understanding is it will be largely from the same kitchen and uh, uh it it gives us a better leverage in terms of uh, uh, enhancing throughput yes also uh, uh, when you say uh, capacity i do you mean uh, space in the kitchens or yeah exactly i mean uh, uh, can i mean it, it's it's about turnover that a kitchen can kind of support right so uh, uh how much of turnover can can get supported by uh, the current kitchens is, is what i'm trying to understand yeah so uh, uh, you know since uh, uh, since last two years whatever new restaurants are creating we are having a dedicated space for our delivery operations inside the Uh, inside the barbecue kitchen uh, outlet so it's pretty much uh, in a very crude manner uh, shop and shop kind of uh, model and uh, we are doing our uh, our ubq operations today from from the same setup right and when we designed it earlier we also designed it with the flexibility that uh, tomorrow we can add uh, some dedicated machines and also put it and serve it uh, so uh, i think uh, in some cases obviously we have to create some space but uh, by and large uh, uh, we are also launching in those places where we have that and uh, we have not seen uh, 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 we don't expect also uh, that place to be uh, to be congested uh, also uh, uh, while doing the research for this particular brand we also obviously upgraded uh, the overall uh, biryani experience both in the outlet also in ubk and also for uh, for this stuff uh, for this new uh, uh, brand that we are contemplating uh, so we don't see that and uh, overall i think uh, uh with this new uh, sort of uh, setup and category uh we expect that uh, that the incremental revenues and and, and profits uh, should be uh, should have pretty much the same dynamic as we had when we when we did our uh, uh, uh ubq launch uh, from our okay 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 and and uh, uh, on this this cloud kitchen where we are seeing you know some kind of uh uh bombs coming in which is which is more like now uh, 15 stores count as where where we are uh, kind of stabilizing at uh, you know what a what a kind of success out in 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 biryani segment uh, would that lead to uh, incremental growth in that that segment as well or uh, uh, this is more looking i mean we are looking more i mean we're looking at this more from the leveraging of the current kitchen space only no so uh, uh, because i think uh, let's look at the four vectors of our growth and uh, uh, you know apart from barbecue india tuscano international biryani one of the key segment of our growth uh, and uh, and we are we are very focused on this segment right uh, we have done i think a very well over last 3 uh, years uh, this year some of the immediate covid related push that we got on our delivery uh, we have seen uh, sequentially coming down right uh, and uh, and Uh, you know that doesn't mean that uh, we don't believe in this space or we don't believe in the growth opportunity of this space uh, this is something that uh, we have been working on for last 6 uh, 8 months uh, this is something that uh, uh, our our philosophy is that how can you make uh, uh, delivery as at least 20% of your overall business and then uh, what is the thing that you can leverage to do that we launched extension kitchen from the same perspective 
uh, when extension is uh, launched uh, versus now, obviously the average daily sales uh, from uh, delivery segment has come down. Uh, and I've always maintained that extension kitchens will also will only start making sense uh, once the once there is the average revenue per outlet goes up to a particular threshold. So that's why you notice in this quarter we have not added any extension kitchens. Uh, uh, the focus first is to increase average daily sales from the existing network, which is now close to 195. Uh, once this goes up, and individually uh, this can uh, sustain an extension kitchen also, then maybe adding more extension kitchen is not a problem, right? Uh, so immediate focus is that uh, don't worry about extension kitchen. Uh, uh, try and increase the throughput of delivery per outlet. And once you do that, then uh, you know your delivery will anyway uh, be taken care of also by adding more capacity from extension kitchen. So that is the that is the broad thinking we have on on this entire thing. Uh, this quarter, for example, I think the focus of the team would be to stabilize this new uh, stuff that we are piloting in few places. You know, this may take uh, you know three to six months, and then once uh, once the basic number is achieved and the uh, and the extension kitchen model uh, is uh, uh, is profitable at that uh, at a double digit number at least. Uh, that is when you push the escalator on the extension kitchen side. Oh, sure, thanks. Uh, just one thing, I, I think I missed this. Uh, what's the guidance for Capex and uh, Store Edition? So we have guided for around uh, 35 to 40 outlets. Uh, as of today, uh, we launched down net 10 outlets this quarter. A uh, very strong pipeline of 15 under construction sites, uh, which are already, uh, you know, the ground business is done. And uh, there are 15 sites wherein uh, we have com- finalized the commercials, uh, they are in various stages of diligence. So uh, today we have complete visibility of the 40 sites that we are planning to open this financial year. Uh, I think we still have uh, around, uh, around eight months to go for the year. Uh, depending on how the new pipeline gets built up over next uh, couple of uh, uh, couple of quarters, uh, we may have uh, we may have to revise the uh, uh, you know the number of sites maybe upwards in the next quarter. But as of now, on the 40 sites are overall uh, capex, uh, including uh, uh, you know maintenance capex, some other stuff that you might uh, 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 capex stuff that you might do for uh, for the biryani stuff. Uh, we may be at uh, at a capex of around 130 to 140 crores. Okay, sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Samir Gupta from India Info Line. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so just a question on the sales per store, uh, which I think this quarter you have done about uh, 6.6 crore uh, sales per store. Uh, 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 the time was that uh, uh, dining itself uh, should get a six crore, and then uh, one crore on top of that should be uh, delivery. So we would be doing about seven crore. So is that a sort of fair uh, thought process to go with uh, uh, even today after seeing some amount of cannibalization between dining and? Uh, 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 sort of delivery. And in this analysis, let us keep this new biryani launch uh, aside. Whatever comes from that will be over and above that. But given the uh, demand situation right now for the full year FI23, what kind of uh, sales per store do we feel confident delivering? So uh, I think uh, uh, seven crore is a uh, is a decent number to to work with. Uh, if you look at our matured portfolio, we have done around uh, seven crores there uh, by analyzing the performance of quarter one. And uh, uh, our historical numbers in quarter one and quarter two put together is is not uh, strictly uh, you know the representation of the full year. Uh, in the restaurant business, uh, second half is always better. Uh, given there are festive seasons, New Year, and other stuff uh, that comes there. So, just on the matured portfolio, I think uh, uh, based on the current numbers, we should cross uh, uh, cross seven crores, uh, which is what we are, uh, which is uh, you know uh, what we are currently witnessing in both our dining and uh, the legacy segment put together, right? Without the new initiative, uh, our new portfolio, new restaurant portfolio is is right now actually very young, right? Uh, if you remember, uh, the real uh, increase in our in our pipeline or uh, increase in our stores started coming from uh, second half of last year. So out of the 38 sites, uh, as I mentioned in my commentary also, around 24 sites are less than six months old. Uh, so uh, in those outlets also, uh, you know, the margins are just about break even. We normally take around three to four months to start, uh, you know, breaking even, right? 
So that's what's impacting the the overall sixteen point six and 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 the margins uh, where they are. Uh, so on the uh, as these these matures, I'm pretty confident that uh, uh, that our revenue uh, and margin numbers uh, should be seven crore plus and at least twenty one twenty two percent range at store level. Understood, understood. But given the fact that at any point of time in future we will always have uh, some stores which are new and in ramp up mode. So if I include them in the average, uh, what would be a correct number to go along with for uh, FY 23, 24? About uh, six and a half crore would be a fair number to go along with that. Uh, no, look, uh, in the current quarter itself, uh, we have done around six point six five, right? And uh, uh, yeah. like I'm saying, this is not the representation of full year. So uh, I think uh, uh, my my internal assessment would be to at least reach seven. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, our covers on pre-COVID versus now, uh, we still see an opportunity of 10%. So we have to go out in the market and capture that. Uh, our mm-hmm. delivery business is obviously not uh, uh, this is not the best quarter for delivery. We have done better than this in the past also. Uh, so that is something that we'll try and regain. And the third is, you know, new initiatives that we're trying from our outlets, right? Uh, so mix of all, at least on top line basis, uh, if we are 6.65 on average in the current uh, uh, you know, quarter, uh, my sense is it should definitely be uh, around seven. That is what we should, we should target. Understood, understood. So you don't think that there is any element of uh, some revenge spending this quarter in the sense that uh, people going out more often and with more uh, frequency than they would normally go out just because uh, they are getting a chance for the first time after two years. That phenomenon is not there in the, this quarter numbers, is it? Uh, I uh, I don't think so. Look, because uh, if you look at our uh, last five quarters numbers, uh, you know I think we have always our recovery on dining segment has always been been very good, right? So I'm not seeing any exceptional. Uh, performance on our dining business, you know, this quarter. Uh, from from my perspective, you know, uh, we are we are still uh, the number that we are tracking is why are we still lower than lower by ten percent from from these going numbers and how do we get our that volume back? So so that is a number that at least we are trying internally. Understood, understood. Very clear. Thank you and all this. Thank you, Sumit. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star followed by one on your dance on phone now. We have next question from the line of Praful Siddharth with Shavas Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I'm audible. Yes, Praful. Yeah. So, so my question is, how are you planning to tackle competition from the likes of Absolute Barbecue? Because based on my understanding, customers look out for two things. One is low price. The second is the huge spread. So how are you planning to tackle this competition? So uh, the competition has always been there. Uh, uh, you know, out of we would be around uh, in India around 145 plus outlets. Uh, we did one analysis earlier and we found that there are almost uh, 100, 120 uh, another uh, similar formats who have copied uh, the concept. Uh, this is not a new phenomena. Uh, we have been seeing this uh, for almost 10 years. Uh, I think uh, uh, one uh, you know, we continue to uh, focus on. Uh, uh, on our guest experience and our varieties, and uh, uh, we are very happy with the performance that we have uh, we have delivered over the last uh, you know so many years on a consistent basis, despite being at uh, at such a high base. Uh, my sense is that uh, this competition uh, will keep on coming and going, uh, and also our, you know uh, just having seen so many businesses, I don't see any business where there is no competition, right? Uh, so uh, nothing that that really worries us in terms of in terms of competition. Right. So oh, yeah. and it's always, always in India. Got it, got it. So my next question is, so I just wanted to understand this biryani brand better because biryani is something which is, you know, it differs a lot from state to state. So how are you planning to like bring this biryani brand out to the market? Would it be like standardized or would it be customized from state to state? So how are you planning to go about this? Uh, so as I said, this is in a very pilot stage. So uh, there is... Uh, 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 nothing more that we can add right now. Uh, this is still work in progress. Uh, this is something that uh, that uh, we are launching in uh, in very select markets right now. And uh, as we as we launch it, as the feedback, uh, we'll keep uh, updating the uh, you know to the market uh, appropriately. 
Got it. Got it. Last question. Is it possible to give us a measure on the employee attrition rate if that's really available with you? Uh, no, so it is. Uh, it is visual than. Uh, uh, it's higher than the usual number that we used to do. Uh, I don't have the exact number right now for you, but uh, uh, that's one area where uh, uh, we were seeing increased rate, and that's uh, uh, that. The reason is multiple uh, in the in the hotel industry. Uh, you know, during the COVID times, a lot of international hires, cruise lines, they were not uh, not hiring. So those avenues are opened up for. For a lot of um, uh, a lot of people, uh, then a lot of other new uh, slowly and steadily more professions are coming up. So uh, as people are uh, reopening, they are building up their teams. Uh, you know, some people uh, obviously are leaving. Uh, so right now it's higher than uh, than what we used to do usually uh, before COVID, uh, but nothing alarming. So it does it uh, does it worry us? No, uh, there is uh, uh, there is some higher spike, but. Uh, definitely manageable, and and that's the reason why you know uh, uh, we are also being able to uh, to hire more people and also open up more outlets that we're doing right now. Got it, got it. That's it from me. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone. Now, we have next question from the line of Vidisha Sheth with Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, so I just wanted to know what would be the quantum of investment on uh, the incremental acquisition that we're making in Toscano and the international business? So on, on, on Toscano business, uh, we would uh, invest approximately 7 crores, uh, 7 to 8 crores. Uh, and uh, in international business, uh, this is a local partner. Uh, uh, in international business, the business, the local business has to be partly owned by the local partner. Uh, there may uh, there is some rule change wherein uh, the foreign entities are now allowed to uh, uh, to own 100% uh, uh, of of the business, and, and we're trying to uh, to work with our local uh, you know agencies to see whether we can own it fully. Uh, there, uh, I think the outflow is is going to be uh, to be more uh, more around big value or something, but uh, that still needs to be uh, uh, to be crystallized. Okay, okay. And uh, what would be the current margins that our delivery business is generating? Sorry, which business? The uh, delivery business. Uh, so, Vinisha, like I said, uh, earlier, the, uh, the delivery business, uh, you know, PNL we don't make separately because it's all done from the same infrastructure, right? Uh, from the same outlets. Uh, so, uh, delivery business uh, gross margin or, uh, is slightly lower. Uh, uh, the food cost, packaging cost, delivery commissions all put together, uh, you know, we add up between uh, between 65 to 70 percent. And the balance cost is all actually fixed. Uh, so, for example, rental employees, all of them are, are, are charged to the particular unit as such, right, and not uh, appropriated uh, differently. But, um, you know, our math is that uh, the margins are pretty much similar, which is around 20 to 22 percent on the delivery segment also. So that doesn't, that doesn't change because the, high, the large portion of the delivery costs are are actually variable. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vilisha. Thank you. We have next question from the lineup. Varun Pratap Singh with IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to check uh, if we have taken any price hike during the uh, uh, during this quarter. Yeah, so um, we had taken around uh, uh, around four to five percent price hike uh, in the uh, in the current quarter, which was uh, actually taken uh, uh, in the month of uh, April and and May, spread across the two two months. Post that, we are not taking any price hike. So, uh, sorry, when you said this quarter, you meant quarter one, right? Yes, yes, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. So we mentioned about that in the previous call also. That post that, we are not taking any price hike. Okay, sure, sure. And sir. Uh, if you can give some color on the store that uh, we have closed during the quarter. So we have closed one outlet in a tier uh, uh, tier two city, uh, and then they also added one more outlet in tier two city. And that's also the number came. Uh, so that outlet uh, uh, was uh, doing low uh, average uh, sales uh, uh, in a month and uh, was bleeding. Uh, we had to mention in the past also uh, with respect to these kind of outlet, and I think. Uh, you know, historically we have not closed outlets, but uh, 
uh, you know, today the amount of bandwidth that it takes is just way too much. So that's why we decided to just uh, move out uh, of that market and, and enter into a new adjacent market. Right, and sir, uh, sir this would be a uh, barbecue nation uh, restaurant only, no? Yes, yes, this is barbecue nation. Right, and uh, sir, roughly how uh, how old uh, uh, this uh, store uh, would be, sir? I mean, one year, the one that we have closed. Yes, so the one the one that we have closed would be uh, around uh, around three to four years old. So we opened up before COVID, and then there was you know obviously COVID impact, and then post that now we realize that it is uh, it's taking just way too much bandwidth. Sure, sure. Okay, okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. A reminder to participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Shreya Lunkar with Motila Loswal AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Shreya Lunkar, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, hi Rahul. Am I audible? You are, sir. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi, Shreya. Uh, Hi. Uh, so, Rahul, just if you can just throw some light on the cash flow conversion for the quarter, um, that would be just helpful. Yes, yeah, so uh, during the quarter, we had uh, uh, cash profits of approximately 40 crores. Uh, our India's EBITDA was around 46 or so. Uh, out of that uh, 40 crores, uh, we have done incremental capex of uh, around 37 crores. Uh, and 3 crores is the net increase in our cash balance. Uh, our net cash uh, at the end of last quarter was around 63 crores. Uh, out of that 63 crores, around uh, around 85 crores was cash in books and 22 crores was net debt that one time. Uh, today, that net cash has gone up from 63 crores to 66 uh, odd crores, so incremental 3 crores. And uh, on the CAPEX side, 37 crore CAPEX that we have done, uh, we have spent uh, around 3 crores on maintenance CAPEX and around uh, 34 crores on uh, new sites. Uh, the new sites include around 11 new restaurants and one uh, one renovation that we have done of the existing uh, of the non renovation. So same site, just renovated uh, the store. Uh, so this capex would be for around 12 outlets. So overall, uh, that's the broad uh, cash flow. Uh, I think. Sure. And uh, and as we speak, uh, how are the inflation trends on our cogs? So we have seen some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, decline in some of these uh, these prices. Uh, also, like I said, this is seasonally weak quarter from uh, from the meat perspective, right? So some of these prices are slightly better for us. Uh, we also are working with uh, uh, with contracted vendors. So some of these contracts that we have long term contracts, we have or here anyway take this into account, right? Uh, but uh, I'm not seeing uh, uh, seeing any significant risk to uh, to our gross margin that we have. Uh, reported in the current quarter and should continue maybe at this level. Sure. And just uh, one question that uh, that Dubai subsidiary that we are planning to acquire 51% for which you are saying the consideration is not yet frozen. But as we speak, is it consolidated line by line or is it treated as an associate? No, it's consolidated line by line. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone phone now. Yes, there are no further questions from the participants. I now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you all. Thanks for uh, joining the call. And uh, if there are any further queries, we are always available. <laughs> Thank you, Ambit team, for organizing this. Thank you. Thank you very much, members of the management. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ambit Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining with us, and you may now disconnect your line.